Hi, I'm Stacey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to be talking about timing constraints and specifically getting code onto your board. Because sometimes you'll find examples online or I will give you examples. And the question is, how do I connect my code to pins and clocks on my board and the interfaces that I have available to me? And I will show you how to do that. The first step is always to Google the reference manual for your board. It's will say reference manual or data sheet or user manual or user guide, something like that. So I'm going to do it with the RTA7. I'm going to head over to the RTA7 reference manual. And so the number one piece of information you're looking for is first and foremost, the FPGA chip you have. So if you have a board and you don't know what FPGA device is on that board, that is the number one piece of information you need, because that is going to tell you what set of tools you need to use. So if you have a Xilinx chip, then you're going to need the Xilinx tools. If you have an Altera or an Intel chip, then you're going to need those tools. And if you have like a Lattice semiconductor, then you'll have to use a Lattice tool chain. The board that you have and the chip that you have on your board determines which set of tools we're going to use. So if we look at the reference manual, usually right at the very top, it will tell you it's got a Xilinx Arctic 7 FPGA. So it's one of the very top things it'll tell you is the FPGA. So you just, you can search through the document for FPGA and look for the vendor of the chip. So I'm going to be using a Xilinx chip today. And so I'm going to be using Vivado, which is a Xilinx toolchain product for our chip. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the clock in my user manuals. Oscillators clock. You can see here it includes a 100 megahertz oscillator connected to pin E3. So that means that we're going to have to connect pin E3 to our clock. So you're going to reference this when you fill in your timing constraints. So if I head over to my Vivado project, here it is. This is the linear feedback shift register project from a couple of videos ago. I'm going to go to my constraints. I already have one here, but I'm going to make a new one today. Add sources, add or create constraints, uh, create file. Uh, example.xdc. Okay. And I'm going to go finish. And there's now my example.xdc that's appeared. So now I have a blank file. What do I put in my file? Well, the first thing that we need to put in is we need to put in the clock frequency. And now what's really nice in Vivado is it has tools, language templates. So if you go to tools, language templates, and you go to XDC timing constraint, you can get examples of what timing constraints are supposed to look like. So if you go clock, you can say it's a clock constraint on import port. So we choose that. So we go control A, control C, close, control V. And now you have an example clock constraint for your port. Okay, so what do we put in here? So we need the name of our clock. So this is the name of the clock region. It doesn't have to be the name of the clock. So I'm just going to do create clock sys clock. It's usually like sys clock or something like that. Then the period. So in this case, the frequency is 100 meg. So I can see here 100 meg. And so that means that I need a 10 nanosecond period. The numbers that are in this file are all in nanoseconds. And so I can put a 10 nanosecond period in for my 100 megahertz clock. So I'm going to head over to here and put in 10 for my period. And then the get ports is the top level signal name. So if I head over to my linear feedback shift register, my input port is named clock. So that's easy enough. So then I just go to my XDC and I put get ports clock. So now I need to tell the synthesis tool what pin my clock is on. So if I go to my tools language templates and we head over to physical constraints, placement, specific location, I open, I can copy that line. So this allows me to tell the synthesis tool where on my board the clock is located. So what pin number? Under package pin, I'm going to head over here and it says pin E3. So these two timing constraints tell the synthesis tool that I have a physical pin on my FPGA and it's located in E3 and that pin is the pin for my clock. And it also tells the synthesis tool that I have a clock with a period of 10 nanoseconds, which is 100 meg. And so now this way, the synthesis tool can take a look at my code and look at the top level clock of my code and go, oh, I know where that is and connect it up to the physical pin on the board. So next up, my linear feedback shift register project uses a 
LED. So I need to find the LED on my board that I can use for my project. So I'm going to head over to my manual and I'm going to search for LED and I'm going to try and find an LED on my board that I can use. So we've got basic IO and it says four individual LEDs. So if we could see here, the LEDs are these ones and it looks like they're pulled down. I'm going to get my LED pin number, um, which is H5. And I'm going to take this, copy this constraint and I'm going to put in LED. So if I look at my top level code, LED is there. And then I'm going to put that in H5. So I also have to set the pin voltage. So I'm going to head over to my language templates. IO constraints, IO standard. So then I'm going to get an IO standard constraint. So the IO standard constraint tells us that this is to what voltage it is. So I'm just going to do, I assume it's LVC MOS, LVC MOS 33, and then I put in LED. So I'm just going to take this line and put LVC MOS 33 on clock as well. So now I've got my clock and my LED, I need a reset. So I'm just going to head back to my reference manual and show it for reset. So there's the reset and it's on C2. So I'm just going to get myself the reset and it's active low. So we're just going to get C2 and I'm going to copy these constraints to the reset. So now we've got the reset, the clock and the LED for our board. I will link in the description what the language templates look like. So in Vivada, I've been using the language templates because they're available. I'm going to see if I can find if there's language templates and quarters somewhere. I will also put in the XDC master link for all the digital boards. And that is it. And it's way more complicated than this, but I just wanted to show you how to do those constraints. I will put the templates in the description. Also a really, really good Altera timing resource that is for the Altera timing constraints that I'll put in the description as well. So I hope that this can be helpful to you. In the next video, I'm going to be doing interpreting timing reports and stuff like that. So I really appreciate you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!